Today I'm going to be going through the structural uh, mechanical collision detection features in ARCACAD. We have something set up in our most current template, uh, but most projects are not running these settings, so I want to talk about specifically how to implement them in your project. Here in this uh, breakout of an actual project, uh, we're looking at specifically um, the structural mechanical elements. You can see they've been all modeled here in a high level of detail. Um, you know, we have the actual profiles modeled. Um, the one thing about this, uh, teams tend to like to identify things with different surfaces. It makes it really clear working on the model. Um, for example, the smaller steel beams here are red, the larger ones are, are pink or yellow, uh, vertical concrete is gray, um, supply ducts are one color, return ducts are another. Um, but this can make it really difficult to identify collisions. Um, so what I've done in the template is I've created a new graphic override to say that we're going to look just for collision detections. And here you can see one's already being flagged, um, and we'll go through exactly how that works here shortly. Um, but everything else turns gray. And what I've done is I've created rules in the graphic override to say that if it's mechanical, plumbing, or structure, and those are all properties, uh, so property group is plumbing, property group is mechanical, property group is structural, uh, the surface gets overridden. Um, so I save that here so that I can come to this and review the collision detection. Uh, it's also a good idea to save out the floor plans, isolating out these elements for collision detection. Uh, so the first part of this is setting up the properties. In the property manager here, our template now has a uh, group set that says the group type is one of these elements, structural, mechanical, plumbing, finishes we're talking about possibly running collision detection between structure and say shade pockets. Um, electrical is an option if you had say some main wiring chases and stuff that you wanted to run collision on, a collision detection on. You could uh, add that as a group as well. Uh, and then these all get added to uh, all classifications. So we'll go and say OK there. Um, and now when I look at this element, this is a beam. Obviously, the element shouldn't be ceiling trim. Uh, we can call it steel beam or something like that. It is load bearing. But most importantly for our purpose, the clash detection is defining that as a structural element. Uh, looking at other elements, here's an object. Uh, that's defined as a mechanical element. Uh, classification is duct flow element or duct flow terminal or something indicating that it is part of the MEP system. Uh, so once everything has a property defining exactly what its purpose is in collision detection, um, then I set up the find and select criteria. This is really critical for running collision detection. We need to know that uh, we have stored find and select criteria, and these are stored in the public sets so that everybody has the ability to run these. So I have collision detection for mechanical, for plumbing, for structural, and really I'm just looking for all types that's in a specific group, that are in a specific group. So here I'm saying that this clash structural is part of the structural group. When I come into the mechanical, um, clash group is mechanical. Uh, and this really works best when we're modeling these elements in-house. Uh, the BIM manual runs through what to do if we receive an IFC file from a consultant and how to run collision detection on that. Uh, it's a different find and select criteria. Um, but once those are stored, then I can come into, uh, figure out where it's at here. Design, yep, design and collision detection. Uh, and here, this is where I can pull down this fly down and get a list of all of my find and select criteria. You could certainly build those out from scratch, but having them stored here is the best way to run. So I could say I want to look for collisions between my structural elements and my mechanical elements. Um, I have the ability to ignore elements under a certain tolerance. Um, we can ignore 
uh, surface collisions all together. Um, and let's say that I wanted to ignore volumes under 0.1 cubic feet and surfaces under one square foot. Um, and then I say check. You'll notice here that it lists off uh, 370 elements, 80 elements, um, that are combined between two groups. Uh, the collisions found, it found eight. Uh, if we go ahead and say cancel, and let's zero these elements out, and then run another check, now it found 10 elements. So it was ignoring two elements when I adjusted my tolerances. Uh, let's go ahead and say continue. And this is where I get the markup tools. And the markup tools can be used for other things, uh, but in this case, uh, it's running collisions. Um, so if I go into my options and uh, markup styles, um, I've created a clash or collision detection markup style, just saying that all of the surfaces and pens are gonna become this color. Uh, I've since running these tests, I've, I've added a group of pens down here, uh, specifically for markups, uh, for collision detections and things like that, uh, as I anticipate we'll start using this tool more. Uh, in this case of the example file, uh, we're just going to use this bright pink pen from our drafting pen set. Um, and now, uh, this is where I see that it was turning bright pink before. That's what allows me to identify this one. Uh, for some reason, it turns common elements into the do not use pen when you have more than one clash showing at a time. Um, so uh, you kind of have to run through these one at a time. But looking at these two as examples, um, you can define a style uh, and you'll see that it changes uh, what it's overriding as um, depending on what uh, style has been used. So you can use different markup styles to say that this is detecting a clash, this is for making comments and remarks, um, but really in this case we just want to identify this we want to give it a tag. Um, that tag becomes important when you run a report. Uh, it's actually identifying that tag right here. So you can actually uh, publish out a document saying who this was created by, what the notes are asso associated with it. Um, you know, you can add and assign comments. Um, so have to review this for the MEP. Assign it to specific people in the project. Um, and uh, zoom to and select different collisions. So if, for example, I select this one, um, I should be able to zoom to it. And I guess that's as far zoomed in as it's gonna go. Um, you know, looking at other collisions here, sometimes they're very minor. And uh, in this case, it's kind of a zoom and select. Oh, there we go. So those are the collisions right there. So in this case, I want to uh, flash three. I should be able to assign the style. Uh, for some reason, it's locking me out of that. I'll assign it to myself. Um, there we go. So once it's assigned to somebody, then I can say that this is going to de detect that clash. Uh, it's going to show the location. It's going to give a name. Um, you know, let's let's assess what this is. So this is uh, a beam. It's a structural element. Again, the element IDs are not properly assigned here. We'll call that solid beam. Um, so I can add a tag. Um, I can add a comment. Uh, status is a warning, and I'm going to say verify with mechanical. Um, again, assigning it to somebody. Um, and then once that's resolved, uh, you could just say, yep, that's resolved, it's done, it's no longer going to be part of the collision. You know, typically that would involve something like uh, this beam, for example, becomes three inches and shifts over two inches or whatever it needs to happen there, or the ductwork changes, or however that's resolved. Once it's resolved, that gets deleted. Um, and really, any time uh, changes are made to the model, 
um, we can rerun that collision detection. So if I close out of this and go back into document and uh, or design, oh, where is it? Oh, it was design. Okay, um, and then check again. You can see that it resolved three of those collisions uh, by moving that beam over. And then I say continue, and those are no longer going to be on the list. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps. Again, um, in-house teams, make sure that you're referencing the BIM manual. There's uh, screenshots and write-ups going through this step-by-step, -step, and I hope this helps.